द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह अज असी गल करा यू एस कॉन्सटीट्यूशन रिलीजन के रोल की कि कुछ रोल अलाउड है यू एस कॉन्सटीट्यूशन के अंडर यू एस की पब्लिक पॉलिसी यू एस ए गवर्नमेंट में रिलीजन का इस इंपोर्टेंट इशू पर गल कर वास्ते अज असी आमंत्रित किया है दो उगे हुए अटर्नीज कॉन्सटीट्यूशन लॉ दे मिस्टर अर्नेस्ट बोनाकोरी एंड मिस्टर जॉन वटफ्याली मिस्टर अर्नेस्ट बोनाकोरी मिस्टर वटफ्याली यू आर वेरी वेलकम थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर टेकिंग आउट दिस टाइम टू स्पीक विद अस मिस्टर वटफ्याली before uh, we uh, go to the to the to the debate of uh, how much uh, should we allow a religion to guide our public policy in this country we would like to first understand what exactly uh, are the founding principles which uh, guide our our, our constitution uh, on this uh, can you can you tell us what is a secular state what is the concept of freedom of religion and establishment of religion in the us constitution america is special always mm-hmm. been special and the reason america has always been special is the separation of church and state mm-hmm. it's the fundamental difference between this country and virtually any other country in the world sure there's less religious and more secular states but at the end of the day um in western culture at least where where religion has been um, integrally tied to 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 the state and to the progress of society uh that clean break uh made america different and great mm-hmm. and why did it happen it happened because of religious oppression it happened because you know for because there was a new country it happened for a wide variety of reasons and the let me put it this way the miracle that it happened mm-hmm. um kind of doesn't matter how it happened but the fact that it happened um was was what special and it took hold in Pennsylvania and it took hold um in the constitutional uh convention and the separation of church and state um asked for two things constitutionally mm-hmm. one the no establishment clause mm-hmm. which means that of course that the government itself cannot endorse any single religion or in my opinion even religion at all mm-hmm. um and then the free exercise clause which is the second part which is very different um it allows americans specifically uh to exercise religion in any way that they want Mm-hmm. Now, that of course bumps up with the establishment clause when it comes to the mix of government and and religion sort of coexisting, but those two things sort of define how America has that wall separating church and state. If that answers your question to start us off? Definitely it, it does. Uh Mr. Bonakuri, can, can you tell us uh, our viewers a little more about what were the circumstances uh, in which uh, you know su- such a stance was taken uh, in, in the uh, uh, you know founding of our constitution because we understand at that time when this constitution was adopted all 13 states had very strict uh, religious tests but we do not see any mention of uh, god jesus or 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 anything uh, religious uh, in, in the constitution can can you tell us why why was such a verbiage not used yes um the constitution the the, the convention uh to ratify the constitution um was uh, don't forget a a horse trading whereby um the founding fathers and the framers were coming from different the different states and they all had their own particular views on uh, uh what should be in there they they uh the concept of federalism of course was very strong and they felt in order to to get the the constitution ratified that uh religious matters were better left or have to have been left to the states to uh determine and and have dominion over that as you had mentioned um several of the 
the, the state's constitutions already had tests whereby you, you had to be a Christian in order to hold office. Mm-hmm. Exactly the opposite mm-hmm. of, of the, the, the federal constitution. Mm-hmm. And, and so uh, the founders, they did not want to, f- first of all, they had to um, ensure this idea of federalism. States had the right over religion. And also they didn't, they, they, were, they were all Christian and mostly Protestant. Uh, and they didn't want one particular sect of Protestantism to uh, have uh, control over the others. So uh, as a compromise, they decided that they had to, to have no aspect of religion, very little in, in the original constitution. Mm-hmm. Don't forget that, that the, the First Amendment came a little bit later at when the Bill of Light, Rights were added. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, before that, there was, only, there was only one reference that said, there, should, there shall be no um, religious test to hold office. And there was a, a mention where, uh, when the president can either veto a bill or not, he has the he has the right to count to to, to not work on a Sunday, mm-hmm. um, and that of course was, I, I would consider that as a, a nod to uh, the day of Sabbath, the Sabbath, the day of rest. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than those few references, there's there's very little. Uh, there's no reference to God. There's no reference to Jesus Christ mm-hmm. in the Constitution. Well, Mr. Vitrilli, I, uh, I understand that uh, there, there would be, uh, you know, this, this uh, issue with, uh, with satisfying uh, everyone because there were like 13 different states and there, that might have been uh, an issue. Uh, but do you think it was something uh, intentional, something deliberate, to uh, avoid any reference, Christ is is a common word, Lord. The way the Germanic uh, uh, preamble starts, it says, uh, you know, uh, aware of our responsibility towards God and mankind. It does not contain a single word at its start. I mean, any legal document at that time, you know, usually used to have uh, this this verbiage. Is there any specific reason you think the founders wanted to keep God or religion completely separate from from, uh, the government? Of course, they wanted, they had every reason to keep it separate. Mm -hmm. There was no reason to entangle the two things. The the classic statement, I suppose, is Mm -hmm. that it's better for both government and religion Mm -hmm. to keep them separate. Government um, uh, has its uh, uh, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, unto the Lord what is the Lord's. They're two different, they're two separate and parallel things. Now, there's no... There's no escaping religion from the person, mm-hmm. but there is escaping religion from the from the entity of government. And the re- there was a very specific reason they did it because there was religious persecution in England, which is how they ended up here in the first place, running away to be free. So the question then becomes: in what in what sense can we um, can we uh, be religious without being specific? Mm-hmm. Um, are uh, sure there are a lot of Christians back then. Sure, there are a lot of Christians now, but in no way is the country Christian. We all know the the Treaty of Tripoli and how there was no, the, you know, this is not a Christian nation and all that kind of stuff was out there. And and if we were to attach ourselves to some religious doctrine, dogma, stripe, whatever, however we may talk about it, um, the, the degree of problem hoisted upon the government for no reason, for one particular sex reason, does not help the whole. Mm-hmm. And as a whole, the country is founded on greater principles than the, than the particular actions of the founders of the day. So I don't say, you know, did Thomas Jefferson um, go to church? Did he have a good church life? Was he a valued Christian? Did he write, you know, in Christian? I don't ask those questions Mm -hmm. because what it was then is different than what it is now. It's becoming a more perfect union. And in perfecting it, we perfect the First Amendment, which separates church from state intentionally and still allows each person to freely exercise religion. I have a lot of points about how that works itself out, but I believe maybe later we'll talk about that. 
<laughs> Mr. Bergeri, uh, uh, Mr. Vitrelli raised a very important point and I think it's a fundamental point we should address uh, because that will uh, determine everything else that we're talking about. Is the U.S. Constitution based on Christian principles? That's a debate. And as Mr. Vitrelli mentioned, you know, in 1897, uh, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams signed this Treaty uh, of Napoli, uh, uh, Tripoli. I'm sorry, and uh, it was ratified ten years later by the Congress. And that Congress had almost all the founding fathers who had initially, you know, uh, developed that uh, Constitution and. Article 11, I believe, of that uh, treaty stated very clearly the government of United States is not in any way founded upon the Christian religion. How do you explain that? You have to understand the circumstances, Arjot, of what was going on at the time. Um, the, the Treaty of Tripoli was made in response to the fact that the Barbary Coast and the Bar Barbary pirates, who happened to be Muslim, mm -hmm. all, all along North Africa, mm -hmm. they were, they were uh, confiscating ships and enslaving U.S. servicemen as, uh, and, and capturing them. Mm -hmm. uh, and John Adams, the president of the time, and Thomas Jefferson um, had, uh, were besides themselves as to what to do. And they, so they were, they were bargaining with uh, the, uh, the Pasha of, of, of Tripoli to say, um, we we understand that you're a Muslim nation. Mm -hmm. um, we're not a Christian n nation in this, and but you also have to look at the the whole context context of the uh, the the quote. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Mr. Bernard We'll continue this conversation after a short break. Tano Mildeya, ek chote ji break the baat. The way forward is Tola Firtu Swagata, Math or the host Har Jot Singh. Aj Asi Gal Karrea, US the Constitution which religion they rolled up. Mr. Bonakuri, before going to the break, you were telling us about the circumstances in which uh, that treaty was entered into. Are you saying that was a concession made by founding fathers out of fear or for, for some reasons? Well, uh, I don't think it was out of fear, but they were they were trying to uh, um, stop this piracy from happening to but the they US. did not mean what they said well first of all they were dealing with a nation that there were no gray areas um, they were um, Muslims who believed that if you were not a Muslim you 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 uh, had to be made war against and mm -hmm. you, they, they, they had never they had never made um, any type of the Muslims of North Africa had been fighting with Christian nations for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. And um, so Thomas Jefferson needed to say something in the, in the treaty mm -hmm. uh, that uh, I don't agree with. And I think it was as, as a concession to uh, the Muslim leaders of the time. You'll, you'll, you'll notice, Harjot, that First of all, it didn't stop the piracy, mm -hmm. and uh, the U.S. had to send some greater military force. And a second treaty was uh, entered into after the, the Americans had established their dominance, and there was no such language in the second treaty. So, yes, I do believe that it was uh, um, placed in there as a sort of an olive branch to be able to deal with nat a nation who otherwise would not have made any, any such treaty with with a Christian nation. Mr. Vitrelli? Isn't that, isn't that why America is really different? Mm -hmm. isn't, isn't the fact that, that we say these things and we have some, some good actions, some bad actions, but we say these things and these things push forward. Mm -hmm. The thing that pushes forward is the separation of church and state. The thing that pushes forward is that it's not a Christian nation. No matter how many Christians there are in this nation, mm -hmm. it's just simply not. There are... So, we're here, where we are right now, is the most diverse community in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, what is it, 10, 15 square miles of 700 nations, 400 religions, or some crazy number like that. Because America has no fealty to, to 
any particular stripe of religion, if we were to start to look at what Christianity are we supposed to follow? Mm -hmm. Are we supposed to follow snake handlers? Mm -hmm. Are we supposed to follow people who speak in tongues? Are we supposed to follow Catholics? Mm -hmm. Are we supposed to follow evangelicals? Which, which Christian am I supposed to follow? Because most of them I don't like. Mm -hmm. I was raised in one, and I have a, a, a strong affinity, uh, affinity to, to my Catholic upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, we're both Italian, and it's just uh, an inheritance, if you will, mm -hmm. um, that brings us into the larger world of spiritual living. But which one should I follow? Which one should lawmakers follow? Should they follow the one that doesn't make any sense to 90% of the other religions? Mm -hmm. Or should they follow the most popular one? Until it, the difference with America is that it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. That it's separate. That it's different. That it shouldn't be one particular thing. You can, you can, we can argue about this later, but you can believe how you want to believe and think how you want to think. Um, but the government itself, which is different, very different from the states and has dominion over the states in the legal context, mm -hmm. um, uh, has no religion and should not have a religion. Mm -hmm. Which one? But Jonathan, wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree that, uh, that, historically speaking, the nation was founded on principles of Judeo-Christian principles, um, uh, and, and the examples uh, can be found in, uh, in the system of government. Um, there, are, there, are, there are passages of the Bible that um, people of the, of the late 1700s uh, knew and it was culturally acceptable and, and most, most persons in, in America at that time were Christian of some denomination. Um, certainly the founding has a basis in Christianity, wouldn't you agree? I, I agree that the, the founding of the philosophy of the morality of the country is Judeo-Christian. So I asked the same question. Should we follow the Judeo laws? Should we follow the Christian laws? Because they diverge fairly quickly. They become very different things. <laughs> and in, in that mesh in and of itself, we are already sort of a mix. Because as much as they're similar, they are still different. Let, let, let me jump in. Uh, Mr. Bunkri, uh, you you are saying that uh, you know the laws, the government, uh, the way it's structured, it is, is uh, you know is based on the Christian uh, principles. Now you know many people in the Islamic world uh, make this argument against democracy. They say in democracy the sovereign is the people, whereas in the uh, under Islamic uh, religion the sovereign has to be God, right? How do you see that in Christianity? In Christianity, isn't God still the sovereign? Well, <clears throat> you can, um, as as a as a Christian, mm -hmm. one believes that Christ is the Savior, mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. You know that we mm, Catholics believe in the Trinity, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit being one God, uh, but. Um, that is, um, th that is a, um, um, help me out here, Jonathan. Hey, look, when it, when the, the, the idea of an overlording God mm -hmm. um, can take a few different manifestations. Now, there's the general God, mm -hmm. right, which is, there's a spiritual world, there's, there's an untapped world out there mm -hmm. that has no has no distinction mm -hmm. right the, the, it, it, it lords over all of us if mm -hmm. you will mm -hmm. but then there then we get into specific religions mm -hmm. the Catholic religion is very specific I was taught very specific things mm -hmm. as a child I went to church and did all the the sacraments and that stuff mm -hmm. um, the Muslim religion very different mm -hmm. the Jewish religion very different mm -hmm. Here in Queens, the 300 religions are all different. Mm -hmm. And this leads to the problem mm -hmm. of, of where does the country unify? Mm -hmm. Now, if the country is going to unify over a nondescript, undefinable thing like 
the energy of the world or mm -hmm. you know God or our Creator or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. as opposed to Jesus and the Trinity, mm -hmm. then you have you have a very different world than Jesus and the Trinity. Mm -hmm. I earlier in the green room was quoting Joseph Campbell mm -hmm. who said uh, it was funny to wake up in in Japan mm -hmm. where there was no Garden of Eden mm -hmm. and, and that's very telling mm -hmm. it's 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 a very overlording principle in Christianity the Garden of Eden and pure and, you know and the devil and the knowledge and all, you know, I won't get into the story but but it distinguishes that stripe from, from the general, mm -hmm. there's a spirituality in the world. Mm -hmm. There's a, a force that we can't really explain mm -hmm. that, you know, that doesn't belong in government. You know, so so my, what I'm trying to uh, understand is that the departure from 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 religion, right? Is that uh, you see that as a compromise because there's so many different uh, kinds of people and what to do? Or you know, uh, Thomas Paine said the cause of America is a mankind's cause, right? And you know, in that spirit, uh, I think uh, it's it's a development for for human civilization that. You you create a, a government, right, which does not inhibit or promote any particular religion, any particular kind of people, any particular people, but let everyone live with the freedom and liberty, you know, that uh, U.S. Constitution uh, promises, that you this know, country promises. In, in America, one of, one of the great sayings is, your, the right, your right to throw your fist extends until it hits my nose, mm -hmm. right? You can punch all you want, Thank but God as long as you, as long as you, <laughs> when you hit me, it's, yeah. then, then, you've, then you've crossed the line. Exactly. It, Exactly. How can how can you be um, how can you be America yeah. without allowing everybody and everything? Uh -huh. Now that comes with good and it comes with bad. Uh -huh. But once you start parsing that out as a government, we can all see how quickly it becomes ridiculous. Mm -hmm. There's not there's not a choice to be made. There's not a there's not a, um, a, a, a sort of loyalty to give to one or the other, and then you end up in the, in a place where you have to start to decide between the government mm -hmm. and God. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. when you when you are spiritual, you don't have to you don't have to choose government or God. Mm -hmm. You can choose to be mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. and make your decisions on that. We will discuss this further after a short break. So see Vigdero, the way forward. The way forward is Tora Firtu Swagata, Matt or the host Harjot Singh. The battle between this, uh, how much. Uh, uh, religion should have a role in our public policy. It is, it's not new. Even in 1800, when Jefferson challenged Adams uh, for the for the presidency, uh, he was saying he Jefferson is going to take your Bibles away, right? That that that, that was his his position. So uh, people have always been, uh, you know, divided on uh, on how much. Uh, uh, you know, religion should be uh, allowed in our government, in our in our public policy. But there are specific uh, instances which, need, which seem to uh, steer the debate uh, away, in, in my uh, view, from the founding principles, that there's, there's something uh, we, we need to talk about. Mr. Bonacri, I would uh, like to ask you, you know, when the words under God were added to the uh, uh, Pledge of Allegiance in 1954. It mm -hmm. was written in 1892. It did not have the words uh, under God. When under God was adopted, do you think uh, that that uh, violates the founding principles of establishment, establishment clause? It's interesting, Harjot. That was a time in America uh, after World War II, mm -hmm. uh, the baby boomers mm -hmm. in the 50s, there was a tremendous uh, turn toward faith, toward uh, piety. The, the attendance in churches uh, throughout the nation mm -hmm. went up dramatically. 
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah, even the National Prayer Day of 1952, that right. was right around that period uh, as well. That, yeah. was, uh, that was Eisenhower mm-hmm. who started the, the National Prayer Graham. And Billy Graham, mm-hmm. who, who He's became, there always. <laughs> yeah. um, started to uh, have prominence. And with Eisenhower, he, he began um, an, a, a relationship with presidents of the United States. Mm-hmm. And the Hiltons. <laughs> The, uh, the, the Hilton, the, the... Yes, the hotel people. The hotel people. Mm-hmm. Um, they put up the first prayer breakfast. They gave, them, they gave them free lodging for 500 people to make that happen, to, to, to immerse commerce and religion together, which is, I find, highly problematic in the American experience. And, and you can deny how these religious uh, figures have... T- People like Pat Robertson, they have turned into billionaires sure. over the years, right? Sure. All right, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, and and so mm. the motto of the United States was changed from uh, e, e pluribus unum, right? Mm-hmm. From many one mm-hmm. uh, to um, uh, um, in God we trust. In, in God we trust, it, and, it, and it was, was that, added to was the was that a contradiction to the founding principle? Yes. <clears throat> Well, answer. I guess I should say no, <laughs> since I'm the, uh, on the other side of the, the debate. Mm-hmm. You know, Eisenhower felt that um, the, the, the freedom that we have in the United States um, is, uh, it was the result of justice mm-hmm. and, and a faith in uh, God or a supreme being. You know, he, he was a very religious man, Eisenhower. And mm-hmm. In fact, um, I, although he had been religious his entire life, he, it wasn't until after he became president that he was baptized. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, <clears throat> certainly, he felt, and Congress at the time, because it was a, a bipartisan a vote in, in, in Congress mm-hmm. to make that the, uh, mm-hmm. the national motto, they felt that, that uh, and I think certainly after, after winning World War II mm-hmm. uh, and the, 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 the zeitgeist of the times was such that, um, uh, you know, America's power was rising and, and uh, you know, the supreme uh, nation of the world, <clears throat> that it was sort of a hearkening back to uh, a founding on faith. I don't think it was in contradiction to... Um, the, the founding fathers, because there was, there was never an absence of faith, there were never an absence of religion. Mm-hmm. Um, um, there were different degrees, uh, you know, some were more pious than others uh, mm-hmm. of the founding fathers. The, I have to disagree. Well, you know, you, you, you're familiar with um, the, the uh, movement of deism, a deism, mm-hmm. which, which was, it was God in... God does not interfere in... Right, it's just God is just all being... St- Set, set the universe in, in motion and doesn't interfere with mm-hmm. day-to-day lives. Mm-hmm. Yes, there was certainly some degree to that, and, and we can we can discuss who mm-hmm. who was more. But aren't we religious? currently in a, in, a, in a state of predeterminism? Isn't it? Isn't it since George W. Bush at least, where where people have where where evangelicals and Protestants have have moved to the idea mm-hmm. that. God has predetermined all things, and therefore your actions are meaningless in this world. Thereby dropping the good worth, the good works doctrine, well, where the goodness of, of of humanity counts, and all we have is we've been predetermined, which I find to be so highly offensive to well, the American experience. I don't even know how to address I, the idea of that. I, as as a Christian myself, Jonathan, I, I would disagree with that. Uh, we have free will, and and God has given us free will, the, 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 uh, the uh, ability to choose between right and wrong. So, <laughs> so the you know, that, that's why uh, it's very important uh, uh, to, 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 to underline this fact that this constitution that we have uh, is, is uh, in complete departure from any religious agreements or disagreements, example of which we are seeing uh, r- right which now. Which is the emptiness so, that he yeah. just talked about. Yeah. There mm-hmm. is an absence of mm-hmm. religion. Mm-hmm. There's a specific absence of religion. Mm-hmm. It's an intentional and growing absence of religion. Mm-hmm. Religion being kept aside from government. Again, on a parallel track, depending on who you are, mm-hmm. you, can, you, can, you can follow it as you like. You can follow the Judeo model. Mm-hmm. You can follow the Christian 
Christian model. You could follow the Catholic, whatever. Yeah, uh, Mr. Petrelli, we, we, we'll come uh, to that uh, later and uh, particularly in the uh, context of uh, George Bush's faith-based uh, initiative. But uh, again, uh, uh, I, I, I've... Uh, talked about uh, the breakfast prayer 1952 the 1954 we talked about uh, the pledge uh, of allegiance something else happened in 1956 in god we trust it was put on our uh, currency and it was put on our public institutions what do you think about that so in god we trust was a national fervor mm -hmm. and i don't think Personally, we should guide the country on national fervors. We've had lots of national national fervors, lots of religious fervor wait, wait, in different I'm times. Sorry, when you say national fervor, is it not a is it a religious fervor? It's, it, it, what, the God? fervor for that phrase, mm -hmm. as describing the country, okay. um, became. Um, widespread widespread acceptance mm -hmm. now it was different and a break from where we started mm -hmm. and it was 150 years separated from where we started and because it caught the nation's interest mm -hmm. I don't find that a sufficient reason to change uh, the sort of foundations of the country sure to make actions to make laws and to change things uh, national fervor matters for example there's a national fervor on gun re regulation that I think should take hold but it has nothing to do with this mm -hmm. other stuff mm -hmm. but, but uh, Jonathan isn't it easy to say that today in in our secular we're growing more secular in our country today uh, yes. per perhaps as a uh, as a result of political correctness, or, but also perhaps as a nod to the various faiths and the, 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 the awakening that uh, each person and each faith and, and no faith also has a value and, and, and should be respected. But it's, isn't it easier to say that today based on our, our, the culture that we live in today than, uh, I mean, yes. Congress, Congress voted uh, to make that the national mo mm -hmm. model, the representatives of the states, mm -hmm. indeed, by by a by a, um, uh, I don't know what the vote was, but it was obviously yeah. a majority vote, uh, obviously, and, yeah. and it was a Democratic Congress at that time. Yeah. President yeah. Eisenhower was Republican. Yeah. No, yeah. Yes, yeah. there's no. Yeah, you know, what I see, uh, you know, uh, the problem uh, is, you see. There's some uh, fundamentals uh, of the Constitution, right, which uh, which have been laid down in uh, various laws, with uh, various uh, Supreme Court uh, decisions. We saw the Lemon case. Now let, let's talk about this faith-based uh, initiative of uh, George Bush, right? Uh, after that started, it has been growing in 96. They said uh, start federal funding of uh, religious uh, organizations, charitable organizations, as much as secular organizations, right? Yes. Now, when, when you are giving funds, I'm talking about practical problems. When you are giving federal funding, state funding to any organization, there is a you know probability of misuse right of and then there's an oversight when you start doing that oversight isn't that excessive entanglement of government with religion isn't that exactly what the supreme court held in so many cases that there should not be an excessive entanglement well those those organizations are asking for the funds mm -hmm. so they better expect to to uh, have oversight no, but the, over them, but, but the, so the, Catholic the, hospitals should do abortions. Well, because that's because that's the national standard, and they're taking the money. And once they take the money, they have to stop. But you don't. But do you believe that? I believe that. Do you believe no, that? No, I don't. I, I, right. See, this is where this is where the break happens. When when the religious expectation is supposed to supersede the governmental need, the government puts its laws on and gives its money. Should we give not religious schools no money, Catholic hospitals no money, well, Catholic charities the, the, no money because they insist on things that are anti-United States government? Well, the criteria for these organizations for receiving funds is that they may not do something that is inherently religious. Mm -hmm. So uh, they can't take the money and pray. They can't take the money and proselytize with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but they can feed feed the poor and and house the homeless mm -hmm. and 
And often, what's and don't forget, George Bush started that. I think he said in '96, at least back in Texas, it started when he was governor there. Mm-hmm. It's still going on. Yeah, these faith-based initiatives, and and it was expanded under President Obama. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, you know, the names have been changed. He added like a commission mm-hmm. to, to oversee it. Yeah. But um, the, the, these 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 programs work yeah. because uh, these organizations Mr. are good at Mr. and people I'm sorry, are religious. Pre- people are religious. F- Le- Fundamentally, I, I, I'm sorry. Let, 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 let me uh, make this clear that we are not, uh, you know, uh, attacking any particular party or any particular president for this. What we are talking about the the direction in which the country is going. Ninety six, it was under Clinton that this program was uh, expanded, mm. right? So, but, but my uh, my concern remains the way you said that they are supposed to do these things. What if they do something else and then there is oversight? And for oversight is excessive and dangerous of government with religion. We'll continue this after a short break. Tano Mildeya, ek chote ji, break the baad. The way forward is toda fir tu swagat hai. Main toda host Harjot Singh. So, so if we talk uh, about how much we should allow religion to guide our public policy, right? Now, there's a huge debate around uh, abortion uh, in this country, right? I think it should be an individual choice, right? Lots of people uh, uh, make that choice not to have abortions, and uh, some people have liberty to make a choice that um, they choose to you know, have, have have abortions. Should this uh, uh, policy be guided by some people's religious faith? Uh, I believe that it is not a religious debate. Mm-hmm. Certainly, religious faith says that life begins at conception. Mm-hmm. But me personally, I don't believe it's a religious debate. I, I, I believe that uh, uh, abortion is wrong mm-hmm. because it is an innocent life mm-hmm. uh, and that that life, uh, uh, the, the, the right of that life to exist and to, to continue trumps uh, uh, the uh, a woman's decision on what to do with her body. Mm-hmm. That's what I believe. But do you think even, it's even if she, even if she's going to die, even if she was raped? But Mr. Vitrelli, there's, there's more. There's Mr. Okay. Vitrelli, the question is this: Yes, is the policy guided by some people's religious uh, beliefs? Of course it is. Mm-hmm. There's no there's no scientific uh, there's no scientific standard proof evidence that the day after the day of conception mm-hmm. the moment of conception which could be no but there that, 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 that there's a life the all heartbeats the, the, what, the heartbeats doesn't beat the next day okay the heartbeat no, doesn't in a, doesn't in a few days beat it does. for till it, so so then at conception we can have the day after pill where, because there's where no heart you, beating the the problem where is where would you draw the line you know that line is changing. Uh, I, I, and and that, that line is, is not getting, changing. It, it's getting it's the, not vi- changing. the viability of a fetus out of the womb is is gro- is getting less as terms of the the youth of the fetus, the so, youth of the baby. It's getting less and less, and it can survive more and more out of the womb. It's an, so, how are you going to draw an arbitrary line there? What arbitrary line? There's there's ten gazillion snowflake babies in the world. Right, if you call them babies, ready to be adopted. Is somebody going to adopt them? Those, these, these well, two cell things. That, that, Nobody's going to adopt them because there's not a person there. There's, there, there's, there's a science experiment there. There's two cells rubbing together there. There's nothing but, built. Look, there's Ro- nothing grown. When Roe versus Wade was decided uh, in the 70s, we're 40 years beyond that in terms, 40, 50 years beyond that in terms of medicine. Yep. And. Um, you know, they they said anything beyond the first trimester, unless uh, the health of the mother is at stake. But n- nowadays, with today's medicine, um, uh, we know that the first trimester being uh, what three months. Uh, uh, I think the heartbeat is in like twelve days or something like that after conception. Mm-hmm. So, uh, to me, that's Two an months, arbitrary line. Look, there's there's a there's a, a law. That's being proposed right now, mm-hmm. where um, entopic pregnancies should be reinserted. Now let's just talk about the insanity, the utter and 
unmitigated insanity of that. Let's talk about the unmitigated insanity of having a father. But ec- how, ec- how much ec- am I supposed to ec- say here? Ec- but agencies are, are, are can't in, in nature they can't those 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 fertilized eggs will not survive. But, if we're, survive. but if we're talking about Christian science you know, what, stuff, what, and then how are we then how are we having any of this conversation? Because well, you, you you once think, you're in Christian science, you're do you in a different think, world altogether. Jonathan, do, do, do Without think, going too much into uh, you know the one particular issue, our, our topic today is is it uh, you know guided by faith, or, or is it uh, are, are you saying just the it's a society's interest to protect the weak? You know, the, and the you his, see the history of the abortion mm-hmm. debate shows that it's guided, it's it's grounded in religion. Mm-hmm. You could say whatever you want about the progress of science and medicine, but it's grounded fundamentally in religion. There's a belief that conception is life mm-hmm. and that the rights are the same as any other living outside the world person, and I disagree. I disagree. L- let's agree to disagree. How about uh, 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 the opposition to uh, uh, you know legislation on climate change is there is there some people's faith which again is coming uh, you know between uh, it's interesting now mm-hmm. uh, uh, Pope Francis mm-hmm. the head of the Catholic Church now says uh, that um, uh, s- that a uh, pollution and and a failure to recognize climate change is, is a sin. I don't think he's come out actually, mm-hmm. but but he's implied that in his but recent he's ex- writings. He's at least accepted that it's it's man-made. Uh, y- yes, and mm-hmm. and to be uh, and 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 to not care about it, mm-hmm. uh, not to, ca- to to not care about the environment, or to to um, uh, it, it's it's wrong as a Christian, as a Catholic, not to um, I, I suppose agree with the precepts of of man-made global warming Mm -hmm. Uh, i i can't quite fathom Mm -hmm. how a christian or a catholic Mm -hmm. could not in every sense Mm -hmm. protect the earth as god's creation Mm -hmm. however i don't find myself using that as my guidance for it i use science as my guidance for it because government Mm -hmm. God's not going to solve this problem for us, and if you're fatalist that way and you believe he is, I I think that's not how government should run. Mm -hmm. If government wants to approach climate change in any way that makes sense, it can only be Mm science-based. And if you you disregard that Mm -hmm. for religion, for some some ethereal thought of what's guiding the world, Mm -hmm. then you are not going to get to protecting what God said you should protect, which is the earth that he created. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't really think about it that way, but if you, if you go with the doctrine, how can you not be there? I don't understand mm-hmm. not being there, Mr. even a little. Mr. Vitrelli, should an individual uh, or uh, an agent of the government be allowed to say no to somebody for a wedding cake? or a wedding license based on their faith as against to the law of the land. Wedding licenses and cakes are very different things because the government is involved in licensing and cakes are bakers. Mm -hmm. People can hate anybody. Mm -hmm. It's America. You get to hate people and we get to not go to your business Mm -hmm. because who wants to go to a hater? But uh, But the government cannot distinguish in the licensing. But the Civil Rights Act created some some barriers to uh, what what you can say no, who you can say no to, right? Well, Well, isn't that then the free exercise of the faith of the baker, the First Amendment? Doesn't the baker have the right to say no? Whether or not it's a bigoted action, Mm -hmm. uh, um, there's no discriminating against those, um, uh, there's no discriminating on the basis of sexual orientation in this country, race, age, sex, Mm -hmm. but uh, doesn't the baker who has a religious belief that it's 
in inappropriate to make a cake for a lesbian couple have the right to do that? As long as he's not licensed like a pharmacist you know, or a doctor yeah. or a school or taking money from the government. If he's private unto himself and doing nothing, you know, that's Mr. different. Mr. Vitrelli started this evening uh, with something. He says, you're free to punch it less, as long as it does not hurt my nose. You know, uh, and, and you know, that, that has been the constitutional position in this country, I understand. When uh, Mormons uh, wanted to enter polygamy, the courts said, yeah, that is your uh, belief, but it, it hurts the society. So for the health of the society, and I don't know if this uh, saying no to anyone uh, on, on, on your uh, belief or for you know, a, a class of people is healthy for the society. I, uh, you know, we are running out of time and I would uh, like you uh, to ask you, you know, this, this current uh, atmosphere where there is more and more reference to religion in, you know, public speeches and appointments of judges and appointments of pastors to, uh, to the government. Is, is that something you see as violative of our founding principles or you, or you think uh, yes. it, it's, you see that as violation? <laughs> How do you see that Mr. Bonkari? Well, uh, America know, has always had a uh, a religious faith mm -hmm. traditionally mm -hmm. so no I don't I don't believe that it's uh, uh, adverse to our history mm -hmm. or adverse and you don't to see there's too much of entanglement uh, of religion or into religion no all right that was our show today uh, mr. Bonacori mr. Vitrelli thank you very much for talking to us thanks thank for this you. lively Pleasure debate to and it was an important topic to see Victor the way forward